Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. All right. Duane will receive the morning offering, and we're going to get into the Word of God here. Continue our message we started last week. Praise the Lord. I didn't know what to call the message, and so uh, Sam just suggested, well, let's call it uh, How Jesus Changed the World. So I guess that's what we'll do. Amen. And I think that's appropriate because he did. And everyone, no matter who they are, has to have something to do with Jesus, either in judgment or in salvation. Praise the Lord. All right. Okay, let's pray for this offering and ask the Lord to bless it. Dear Father in heaven, we come to thee in prayer and we are thankful for this offering. I pray, O Lord, and we all present it unto thee with cheerful hearts, and I pray that thou wouldst bless it and use it to the glory of thy name, even the wonderful name of Jesus. And in that precious name of Jesus we ask it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. Glory to God, hallelujah. It's wonderful to be here, to be able to continue on in this message that we started last week, how Jesus changed the world. And we are going to open to Luke chapter 20. Uh, we're going to sing a chorus, though, and you probably are wondering which one. You know, and, and most of you are probably thinking, well, we're going to sing, keep on walking by faith. And you're right. Very good. <laughs> Amen. I just wanted to, to thank uh, those who help us get this message out all over the world. We have, uh, back at the cameras here, of course, we have Brian and Deborah working together on the cameras. And then we have uh, Sam up in the skybox who's doing the recording up there for audio. And it's, it's a great team. So we're really thankful that we can get this message out. We're hearing from so many, many people that uh, it, it's increasing constantly, and I'm just so thankful for that. But we're going to sing this chorus and let's do what the chorus says. Let's keep on walking by faith. Amen. Keep on walking by faith. chapter 20, beginning with verse 20. And I'd like to first of all pray because we need the Lord's help. Without Him we can do nothing, and I've learned that over the years. I started preaching when I was 20 years old, and I'm pushing 58 now, so that's a while. And I've learned one thing for sure, and that is we need to completely submit to God. You have to just let Him absolutely take over. And this goes for everybody listening, too. Just yield to God. He will speak to your heart because it's His Word. Amen. And because it's His Word, it comes forth with power, and the kingdom of God is within you. And so great and marvelous things happen when the King of kings and Lord of lords speaks on the inside of you and does a work on the inside of you. Amen. Christ in us, the hope of glory. The Word is working mightily in me. As the Apostle Paul said, let the word work. Amen. All right, praise the Lord. So, amen. Let's just, I really want to pray one more time yet. Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful, O God, for thy holy word. It is so precious to us. And I pray that it would do a great work in the hearts of thy people 
whether they be in this congregation or all around this whole wide world. O oh Lord, I pray that thou wouldst touch them and help them and lift them up, O oh God. Lord, that thou wouldst change their lives and prepare them for thy soon coming. For indeed, these are the last of the last days, and the signs are everywhere. And Lord, thou didst prepare us by thy spirit and through thy word. These two great witnesses, O oh Lord, of word and spirit. And O oh Lord, I pray that thou wouldst help us now to receive thy word and to obey it. And we ask it in Jesus' name, through the power of the blood. Let Satan be put to flight. Let him have no power to interfere in any way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Isn't it an awesome and wonderful thing when you can learn of God and learn to do what is right instead of what's wrong? You know, in this world, little children grow up, grow up learning to do what's wrong. And you look at them sometimes and you think, what chance have they got with what they're watching over the television and what they're getting in the movies and and what they're getting in the public, or pardon me, government schools, what chance have they got? Well, thankfully, Jesus Christ is able to break through it all and call people out and open their understanding and give them an understanding heart and mind so that they can respond to the gospel and be saved. You know, isn't it something how people make the same mistakes over and over and over? You know what one definition of insanity is? When you keep making the same mistakes over and over and over and then wonder why the outcome is the same. That's one definition of insanity. Keep doing the wrong things, but bad things happen as a result. Why? Hmm, I wonder. In other words, they don't learn from their mistakes. And the Word of God teaches us and instructs us what to do. Jesus is our perfect example. And I am just awestricken and amazed at the things that he did and said. You know, as I was reading this morning, before I came over here, and reading the words of Jesus, I'm telling you, I had such an experience because I felt like I could hear him speaking. I, I heard what I was reading. I don't know if you ever had that happen, but it was the Savior talking to me and telling me his words as I was reading this. And it's, it's impossible to describe that. I did as good as I could with it. But it is an awesome, wonderful feeling when you're in the very presence of God. He's right there, and you read his words, and you feel and hear and experience his presence. There's nothing greater than that. Amen. Now, in the 20th verse of Luke 20, it says, And they watched him. Now, understand, we're talking about the Son of God here. This is God, very God, creator of the universe, wearing a human body. This is God standing there, and standing with him is an entire congregation of people in the temple. A lot of people were there. And we know, of course, that the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes and uh, their entire entourage came in and tried to interrupt him. And that's what this is all about. Why? Because they felt interrupted. Their religion was interrupted by truth. Do you know truth is the great interrupter? When truth comes into your life, the true things about the Word of God, the, the, the truth of his power to save, the truth about the fact that religion without Jesus is abomination. Come on. Well, he was interrupting them. And so they were watching him and sent forth spies. What is this? Religious espionage. You see, some people are targeted. Jesus became a target. <laughs> 